Archiving started. Hello. Welcome to California State University Chico and our Technology and Learning and Teaching Symposium. Today we are very honored to have Dr. Katie Whitlock visiting us from the theater department and she's going to be presenting a, a special session on how to author using unusual software. In this case, it's Pachyderm, and I'm going to turn it right over to Katie. Thanks Great. for being here. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Claudine. Okay. Hi, everybody out there and wherever. All right. So um, I'm going to talk to you today primarily about Pachyderm and the mode in which Pachyderm gets used and what it's viable for in terms of looking at it as an authoring tool either to use in your classroom for content material or to use for your student in an opportunity of how they might uh, want to engage with multimedia authoring tools. Um, so the first slide that's up is talking about how I actually kind of found Pachyderm. Um, originally the way that this came about as part of the eAcademy learning program, um, I was engaged with another faculty member in reworking what is our jumbo class introduction to theater. And when we started to look at it, we decided what we wanted to explore was to take it into a hybrid format and basically reconstitute what would normally be textbook materials um, and make that so that students could explore it in an online modular fashion. And we wanted to do it in modules so that if this course gets shifted around for new general education or if it gets changed because of other faculty having to teach it, that you could say, great, I'd like to keep these 10 modules, but I'd like to add two weeks where I do my own specialization. So in looking at that, I came to Claudine, who is our wonderful technology and learning person, and I said, Claudine, what, what's an option? And she said, have you heard of this little thing called Pachyderm? And I went, no, except it's an elephant. So um, I was very excited to explore Pachyderm. And what we were particularly interested in was we wanted something that would allow us to incorporate some video clips, because in performance, it's nice to have well, there's lots of stuff out there, but to control what students are looking at, that's particularly useful. Also to be able to use image and text to make sure that students could see particular kind of archival references to performance and then also be able to respond to those. We also wanted to make sure that this was easy to use, but there's an odd disconnect that occurs in contemporary students between easy to use and too reductive looking to look at. Um, that students don't like to be talked down to, and that includes the media that you use. So one of our interests in working with Pachyderm was, is this a slick enough form that students will be attracted to it and engage with it and want to look at more of it? Because they look at so many web authoring kind of sensibilities. Because everybody's looking at their Facebook, multiple web pages over the course of the day. So this was a first kind of stop for us. Claudine suggested this as a place to explore. And what we began to do was look at Here's information, what happens if I put it into Pachyderm and what happens if I put it into a more traditional kind of web page format and kind of what we got from that. Pachyderm is extremely easy to use. You don't have to be scared of it. Um, it looks a bit intimidating simply because of the fact that there's a lot of things to kind of know on the front end. Once you know the basic stuff on the front end, it's all happy, happy times. What is useful about it is if you've ever taken a basic web building class, it's most of the same information. How do you save images in the correct format? What is allowable in this format? What templates exist? Um, <clears throat> the Distributed Learning Center has an excellent website. This is their homepage, um, which gives you a good idea of kind of the Pachyderm focus. It also links off to other work that they've um, kind of created and other pieces that they're dealing with. What has happened is this allows you to apply for an account, and what you get is Pachyderm basically allows you to support multiple materials. What it kind of puts out is a flash video, basically, that is interactive for your students to step through. What's really useful about this is you get a what's new, so that if you've used it before, I would recommend checking out the what's new because they have made some upgrades in the system. It's got a really good user-friendly manual that you can find most of the basic information. Um, what's also really useful is they've also got template workbooks. One of the biggest things about learning to work in Pachyderm is you have to think ahead. This is the exact same thing that you have to do when working in web-based authoring. If you just have a lot of stuff and go, bleh, that's what you're going to get. So if you're smart, you have to kind of graph out the way that you're going to lay out your materials 
and think about how the user is going to interact with those and step through those pieces of material. Um, what's nice is in the template, it gives you very much exactly what you see in the interface screen so that really you have to become on all about which letters go where, which numbers go where in terms of what is allowable in what space. Um, the biggest problem that a lot of people have in looking at this is they try and put something that doesn't fit in one space into that space and then it doesn't show up. So you have to be careful and considered when making the choice of what goes where. It is very clear, but it does require following directions, which when I get to student use is sometimes a challenge. Not always, but sometimes. Um, what's also really useful about this is they've done some basic online video clips that they step through how to add material and basically taking you through the template screens so that you can see someone else create something from it. Um, they are relatively uh, pretty basic, pretty simple, and user-friendly. A um, couple of webinars, which they've started to do now. What's also useful is if you are trying to do, especially video file conversion, um, it gives you, they've got a couple of free resources here. Um, and in terms of working with some of your graphics. Because one of the limitations of the program is that it puts you into a constrained sizing. And in that constrained sizing, you have to make sure, can, it, can they see all the information that's needed? Can I make sure that they can access what it is that they visually need to see represented? Um, the other thing that you might find particularly useful if you're interested in this tool is their gallery. Their gallery has a range of materials that have been created by multiple authors in the CSU system. Um, we're included in this. Um, and it, they're basically kind of show, trying to show you how different templates work in play. Um, and so it's one of those where they can explore it. A lot of what exists right now is portfolio work and museum or gallery collections because it's really well suited for visual images and archival sensibility to some extent. Um, and that's where we became a bit more kind of, hmm, are we choosing the, ra the right thing for this? Um, when you actually go into Pachyderm by itself, have I just typed my password? No, of course not. How about that? There we go. When you enter into an account, um, this is created for you, and you have the option to look at what media you've uploaded, as well as the presentations that you've created. If you go into the media file, this is where you can go through and you can search using particular tags that you add onto each image. Step number one when adding material, add tags. Because if you can't, it searches by the tags. So if you put in a bunch of media, you might have trouble finding it again. It doesn't search the title of the image. It all searches off of the tag file. Um, so what you get is a lot of mine had theater as kind of a, just an overview tag, um, and everything has short names on it so that I kind of know where it is. Um, you can look at whatever you've uploaded. It gives you a large amount of detail information, which is good for um, disability access. Um, it gives you alternative text and a longer description if that's something that you feel that you need to do for clarification of the image. This works also for audio files and media and uh, movie files as well. Um, Rights holder, uh, not too much. Um, I kind of cheated because I was doing this down and dirty in the summer, so I didn't put in every single option. Also, some of the material that I pulled was web-based material. Um, it's the same problem that everyone's encountering in the sense that we all steal from the web on a regular basis. It, it's one of the things that I think we all do um, to some extent because this is password protected in the sense that you would have to know where to find it is where I feel like we're safe in terms of it's uh, working under some of that uh, educational license to some extent. Not perfect, but at least somewhere to start. In presentations, what you'll see is every presentation that you begin to build has its own space. When you go in to edit a presentation, what you see is you get an idea of the template that you're working off of for each page, and you can preview the finished page, or you can actually click into it. And what you'll notice is just like on the template page that I showed you, everything is letter marked to give you the idea of where you put all of the different pieces. The biggest challenge for a lot of this is making sure that you don't put too much text or too little text because you don't have control over text size and you don't have control over centering your text. 
you can't make everything look as pretty as you want to because they basically made it fill in the form and the form reconstitutes itself. Also, if you cut and paste text information, symbols and characters, as in with many web forms, do not translate, so you get odd gibberish. Um, so you have to go back in and edit and re-clean back up any text that you put in. Um, and what you'll see is, is that in this presentation, <laughs> what you'll see is this is a relatively small seven screens. You want to name everything that you're doing so that you can remember how to get back to stuff because this is only a seven screen presentation. When you go into a 27 screen presentation where you start getting into more detail, you can get confused really quickly as to what is where and what the best kind of armature is in terms of thinking about it. I have some experience in web building, which came from my graduate education um, that I've continued. So this felt pretty comfortable for me, but for somebody who was coming in with absolutely no experience, knowing the little things like remembering to, to kind of rename your files, remembering to put things in a particular format, those are all things that people, it's not their common behavior. So it's one of those things that sometimes is hard to adjust to. What is also nice about this is you can view the presentation. You can also publish the presentation and download a zip file of it so that if um, you wanted to, you could reopen that and it gives you the flash file. If you are HTML savvy, you can go back in and recode and kind of restructure it a little bit. Um, but that's once again, if you're a coder and you're able to go in and edit to that level. Um, it also allows you the fact that you can have it saved and then publish it to your own website without it having to be um, hosted off of the CDL server. So that's the kind of nice functionality about that. Um, each kind of unit presentation that you're working in is saved separately so you can have multiple presentations underneath your name, which is nice. You don't have to create a new file for every presentation that you're creating. Um, also, any media that you have uploaded, you have access to for multiple presentations so that if you want the same background, you can get to it. It's got that kind of, it just goes through anything that you've tagged and that you submitted. It will find those things for you. Um, and the multiple types of files, JPEGs are all fine. It'll do GIFs. It does flash video. It'll do MOVs, although it gets a little slow on some of the MOV files depending upon their size because it's not uh, this would be QuickTime movie file. And if um, you save them out, sometimes people will save them and they're really large files, but they're not aware of the SOTA file. If you make them smaller and compress them, they will work better because this is once again working from an online environment as opposed to being um, from something uh, completely hard, hard drive. Yeah. Hi. Um, I wonder, I think you said it near the beginning of your presentation mm -hmm. that the product that Pachyderm creates is Flash-based? Correct. Is there a way to export it to another format? At this point, there isn't. They are working on an HTML5 version, um, and Lou said that they're expecting the HTML5 templates will come out before the end of this year. But the project is, it is partially supported. It's not, they're not constantly working on it. I believe they only have one person who's really kind of working and changing it. It is open source, which is why it's free to use, so there might be somebody else that will do it, but currently what's available through the CSU system is working on it and it just hasn't gotten to that. So right now, this is not your friend if you're trying to deal with iPads. Um, that's probably the biggest consideration for people right now in terms of thinking about if students are working iPad-based. And I don't know, what I don't know is if you build right now, if there will be a good conversion module to be able to take existing pachyderms into the new version. I'm sure they'll do something, but don't know yet as to kind of what that stands like. So thanks, Katie. I, I was no thinking about iPads being used more and more, and so we will look at that. Yeah, and that's, I think, one of the biggest things in terms of where, where the crossover is in terms of when our iPads are going to become as big as we think they're going to become, or will it be the next thing down the line? So I think that's why the HTML5 is kind of what they're looking to explore. Um, in terms of kind of working with this, so Pachyderm is our friend. Um, it has the sweet interface, as we like to call it. Um, when I started working on this, and over the summer, I had other faculty and nice people at TLP who were judging my work. They were like, ooh, the website when it's boring. We like the Pachyderm. And I was like, yes, it is pretty. They, they did, I, direct quote. Um, 
So uh, it was one of those where it was like, okay, this is really slick. It's really sweet. It Contemporary users like it because it it makes noise. It fades. It has that kind of sense of like, ooh, I'm watching like a movie trailer or something kind of esque. And it is pretty easy to use in terms of the fact that the build is relatively simple. Your prep is not simple. You have to think really carefully about what you're doing. And I think that you have to do that no matter what you're going to do with media. The difficulty in this is navigation limits. When you go into one of these um, particular pieces, oh, no, go back. Uh, oh, if I step out, oh, how about this? Hold on just a sec. Go there. Let's look at this. Okay, so what you've got here is you've got six pieces that kind of spin off. Then you've got another six from this. So if I go into this, this is one of the other tricks of Pachyderm. Sometimes it does not load every single page every single time. And you have to, if I click home, then it takes me all the way back to the very beginning. So you have to get very familiar with where your back button kind of lives. And it's running. Come on. Try that. Yay. So like this, I have a lot of information, but you have to know how far into the piece you're going to go. Nice, you know, a little Steve Martin, good for everyone. Uh, one of the problems that students had was that um, unlike YouTube, where you can move forward or backwards in the clip, this is limited in your control. It's just play, and you must watch to the finite end. You can pause it, but it doesn't have a rewind or backup capacity in that context. Um, so now if I'm a student and I've gone through and read this, I may have forgotten where I am in the context of the larger thread of the information. So if I click home, it's like, oh, no, now I have to remember, what did I miss? Well, if I go back to tragedy, okay, that was all right. I got that one okay. So if I go back and I decide to go to melodrama, melodrama, because it had a different type of information, is organized slightly differently. Come back. So, you know, everybody needs a little Lego Star Wars to explain melodrama to them. Um, so, always good. The other thing is, is people got a little confused in terms of being able to scroll back and forth, um, just in terms of some people dealing with the kind of architecture of the page. Also, the things is you can increase the size of the text, but boy, does that blow anything that you've set up as the look of the page. It also will cut off information that's in some of the boxes when you go to the full size. Um, it does allow for a screen reader, which is nice at this point in time, but it does have some limitations because if you're at all text heavy, it becomes difficult to navigate in that concept. Um, what we did in terms of kind of part of the reason that we realized this existed was this was from discussion between myself and the other instructor, Mike Mazur, also with Claudine and some of the other faculty who were going through eAcademy. Um, and what we decided to do was we decided to test this in the fall of 2010 with an existing class and have them experience the same information, but in two different forms. Um, we did a version in Pachyderm and basically the exact same information into a web-based form using RapidWeaver just because that it's a step in between iWeb and Dreamweaver. So it's, it allows for a little more control and a little better layout and architecture of your pages. Um, whereas it's not, you don't have to like, it's, it's, you know, Dreamweaver is your Boeing 747. Um, I did not need the Boeing 747. I needed the mid-sized jet. So it gave me a little more flexibility. Um, in terms of looking at this, this is a contemporary theater experience. This is laid out just like a very simple kind of web page, so it's very basic in its structure. Um, it allowed for being able to put um, all of your various kind of pieces about what is art. Um, and this, instead of having a pachyderm page, then you had the little dot. Now you had this, which allowed for tabs for people to be able to go through. Um, a link to a sound clip um, in terms of being able to kind of work with the context of this. This first assignment was also to look at, um, this first module had them look at comparisons of contemporary film and contemporary musicals. So this allowed for students like that there was a little more control. 
So it's more like the traditional YouTube sensibility of being able to move through your video if you've already seen it or you want to go back to something, you have a little more flexibility. Um, so that was kind of where we started with that. The other thing is it allowed for a site map just so they could see the layout of what pages were off. Yes. Again, just to be clear for the folks looking at this Certainly. a little bit later, what you're showing us right now is not Pachyderm. It's the web version Correct. that you this compared is, to. We did two modules. One, we did a, two modules where we did both pieces in Pachyderm and both pieces in Rapid Weaver. And what it allowed us to do was do a test with the students to see for the simpler, less information, you could get through the Pachyderm in much the same way you could get through the web. Um, but the difficulty is when we go to something that's more dense. And <laughs> This is the text base unit, so that rather than having to look at, so I still have, it looks like the exact same, still got a sidebar here. So my melodrama now, um, instead of having multiple pieces, it's more drawn out with color. You still get your Lego Star Wars. Um, and these are embedded YouTube clips because I kept the links, and so this also allowed for me to keep down the sizing and I didn't have to worry about a server um, keeping it and tracking it. Now, they could disappear off of YouTube tomorrow, um, but for right now, and I was going fast and furious because it takes a lot of time to get any of this kind of stuff up and built. Um, I was also able to do more color coding and kind of block basing in terms of thinking about uh, terminology and ideas, which you have less control of that in Pachyderm. So for the student purpose, this seems like a better, it seems like a better way to make something that they could actually follow and get the concepts out of. Um, it's also an architecture that they're more familiar with so that if they get lost, the site map gives them an easy way to kind of find the pieces that they, oh, I forgot to look at that page. Oh, great. Oh, and she has like steps in there. I can click through those. So it's one of those circumstances of trying to kind of figure out the best object that's going to serve the student learning. Um, the drawback of working with Rapid Weaver is I was building so fast that I'm sure I have uh, disability problems because I'm not a professional coder or web builder. Um, but what this allows me to do is constitute all the content and imagery in a way. Um, what it needs now is somebody to go through and clean it all up and make it give it like friendly tags so that people with screen readers would have better context of understanding what the images are trying to do and that sort of thing. Um, and that's something that. I will probably do it some point in time, but once again, it's that whole idea of kind of, when you're going so fast, yes, it would be great if we could build for every constraint, but we don't always know what things are that are viable to us. The other downfall of working with Rapid, it costs me the money <laughs> um, because it's not one that's supported. So I laid out the cost to do this, and I chose to do that partially because I like this building software, um, and I also built my tenure materials in uh, a web format as opposed to killing trees and giving you lots of binders. Can uh, you tell us what the cost of Rapid Weaver is? Is it? Is it? It's about seventy to eighty bucks for an educational license. It's not super expensive. What is a little bit expensive is it has. Um, it's become very common amongst a lot of kind of uh, web developers, and it has. There's a bunch of different modules you can buy that give you extra features. And I probably laid out another 30, 40 bucks in extra features to be able to play audio clips. Um, there's a really helpful couple of ones that help you organize information on a web page really easily. Uh, and actually the one that I did to build the site map was actually that's a purchased one. Um, they have one, but it doesn't have as much clarity and it cleaned up my file saving, um, which was, it, it cleaned up all my naming conventions, which was really nice. Um, if you're interested in that at some point in time, I can give you a list of all the ones that I bought. Um, in terms of testing these, what's interesting is, is in running these, um, then I did a kind of a, a survey that the survey material that I did off of this um, Google Docs, make a form. What's really nice is um, your students can actually, they're tracked in terms of their ID number is tracked if you choose to make it that way. So we checked to make sure that all the students were doing this. They got, in fall of um, 2010, they got extra points for evaluating both for us. And what we saw was in terms of kind of asking them to think about which one they liked and which one they didn't, the web won in the sense that people liked that, but a lot of people liked both. 
And some people did prefer the pachyderm over the web format. And this is once again a difference in all of our students are not the same length of media savvy. Not everybody's working to the same depth of enjoying uh, using technology. So what we found was people were very attracted by the bells and whistles of pachyderm. They were like, ooh, pachyderm is cool, it makes noise, it does things, and then they would get irritated because it makes noise all the time. Um, so they'd be like, turn off those damn sounds, which were like, we're sorry, that's a part of the program. Whoop. Um, so there were things about pachyderm that they really liked. What was interesting was we felt like, hmm, okay, so that gives us a, this could be dangerous. People like both. Does that mean I need to build both? And then I went home and cried a few tears. And then I came back and I said, I'm just going to build the web versions because it's faster and it's easier um, for me. So, and I thought about, and this is actually, Claudine was particularly helpful because Claudine kept going, I don't understand how I get through all of the information. So she kept asking me the navigation question in terms of interface. So a lot of conversation with Claudine, I was kind of like, yeah, I think I'm going to do the web. And Claudine and I agreed that that was probably the best route to go, that it was fast, I was able to do it quick. Um, and so that's kind of how I went for the teaching module. Um, and what we did is this semester, which we're running, this is a hybrid course right now. It's actually in its prototype virgin semester. I'm sure many people will be killing it. Um, what it's done is, is I've asked them, I, I did the same set and gave them the option of kind of like, would you mind looking at this? And a good chunk of people went in, looked at both, and they just said, we think the web one is actually much better for us for study purposes. You're quizzing us on this material. I have a much better shot of finding the thing that I didn't understand in the web-based one as opposed to the pachyderm one because the architecture makes more sense that I can find the information. So that was a big reason that they kind of went. And what was also interesting was I asked them for, um, I've made some modifications in the way that I build them kind of off of some of the student comments. And what's interesting is, is that it's that weird disconnect. It's the minute a grade is involved how simple can you make it, but don't talk down to me, which I find really difficult to do well um, in terms of trying to keep it so that they're engaged and interested and will read the material and then whether or not they retain the concept. Um, and that's a difficulty in terms of getting the student connection to work. The other problem in this course is the students are like, wow, theater is hard. <laughs> and I just find that amusing. Um, <laughs> So this was kind of that, the kind of uh, recap of that, that uh, pachyderm is great because it's nonlinear, it's really visual, not ideal for text, and the density of information makes it hard to follow. Um, the rapid weaver, the more traditional architecture makes it more point and shoot, point and click, for the students in terms of being able to follow. Now, so we decided to kind of use, we're using a blend of both. We've got a couple things um, that actually feed off into pachyderm. Uh, because it is great for doing some audio and some visual links. So it's got some use there. Um, and it needs more options to make it more viable for a faculty member to use it in the building concept. Um, and I think that they know that. It's just a question of not anybody's dedicated to building the tool or pushing the tool forward. If somebody wants to do that, it's going to get more use um, because I think it's a great option. Now, but it's really good for your image library. Any visual library class should be using Pachyderm. It's got really nice sensibility in the sense that you can load high quality images and then do zoom factors, which I don't do as much in mine because most of mine was trying to get information attached to image. But you can use the zoom function, which a lot of people, some of the gallery samples have the zoom function of looking at a key work of art and, and focusing in on look at how the hand is painted in this particular position. So it's got really good viability. So here's the thing. I really like Pachyderm, but I'm like, hmm, can't use it there. Maybe I could use it somewhere else. I teach textual analysis, um, which, boy, how, how in the heck do you take something that's all about a bunch of words and add in a bunch of visuals? Final project for this course is what I used to call play in a box, <clears throat> which is I handed the student a baker's box and said, take the concepts of the play, tempo, rhythm, mood, and put the play in a box. Visualize it into kind of almost like a little art installation, basically. Um, and this is very hard for a lot of our performance motivated kids to do uh, because then I sing it and dance it. I'm like, no. Oh. Um, our design kids love this kind of freedom because it gives them a mode of creative expression. 
originally it was done as the plan the box. The images down below are actually a couple of the plan the box um, experiences. Uh, they do some great work. Um, they were, you know, this one, this one was, it was actually like a little hand warmer. So it looked like a heart that was warm and you could touch it. It was like hot, <laughs> kind of creepy. Um, suspended bodies. Oh, look, a brain. You know, it's very exciting. So uh, to try and come up with a different way to do this, uh, what I did was I said, okay, instead of the plan a box, we're going to put a plan a packeter. Um, the idea behind doing this was partially driven by the sustainability initiative because this would not create waste. Um, all of us remember when we were kids in school and we built a volcano or we built a diorama where the you know, bighorn sheep were on the mountain. And then what did you do with those objects? Bye-bye. Um, unless, of course, they're gathering dust in your parents' basement, which I do have a couple of models from my scenic design classes, which are, in fact, doing that. For this, I felt like the students had spent money time and energy in something that they didn't have a place to store. Um, it got chunked. So I said, let's try this. Let's see if this will work as a way to do it. I had 35 students. I had everybody who was terrified of computers to people who enjoy computers and use them on a regular basis. So I had a range of skill sets. I um, kind of introduced the project to them, told them to do a lot of their prep work in terms of thinking about what kind of ideas they were interested in. And I showed them my existing projects that I had built for my classwork and said, these are the things that we'll let you do. And they all went, but, but we can't do that. I was like, yes, you can. So we did two sessions um, where I said, great, here's the thing. Open the software. Great. Go to something. Type. Hit preview. Look, it's magic. <laughs> And they were like, ooh. So I had much kind of like, wow, we can make things that look pretty. Uh, it's kind of sad but true. Um, so it doesn't take much. Five weeks of lead time in the sense of five weeks from when I assigned the project to when it was actually due. This was their final in the class. Um, so they had more time kind of, they, they were thinking about it. It was not a new play to them. This was something that we'd been working with a series of six plays over the course of the semester. They chose one of the six to work with. What we got was um, there was a lot of kind of assumptions of just getting them past the, I can't do this. I was like, really? Yes, you can. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, stop talking to me about that. Um, I was like, can you follow instructions? Read that manual. Uh, well, I was like, did you read the manual? No. Okay, when you read the manual, come back to me. Um, and the students actually just kind of, they started helping each other, which is always what's helpful. These are theater kids. So by nature, they tend to do that. Um, might be harder in a class in which you had more people and they were less uh, comfortable in asking each other questions. This class was geared around a lot of discussion, a lot of sharing of ideas. So they, they already felt comfortable talking about the concept with everyone else in the room. Um, the two in-class time sessions, I did a little bit of show and tell. A lot of it was going around and helping them try and figure stuff out. Some of them were proactive and came in and had questions. Those in-class sessions were great for them. My slackers, which would probably be at least 25 of the 35, were all like, yeah, we should probably start working on that. I was like, yes, you should. Um, uh, what was really nice was um, I went through and I posted in my Vista section um, all of the kind of the template workbook. Um, Luz Wire, who is with uh, CDL, um, the distributed learning group. Lou very kindly sent me a sheet that was kind of like, here's the big things that you need to know about Pachyderm. Only use these kinds of images. Don't use files that are longer than this. Kind of a, just a, it's a, it's a one sheet. I'm guaranteed they can read one sheet. When you tell them to read more than one sheet, you're screwed. Um, the other thing is the current service in terms of CDL um, supporting this, it is their server. They upgraded their server last summer so that it could handle more traffic. Lou was terrified of my class. <laughs> when will they all be on? I'm like, Lou, I, they got five weeks to do this. I got a couple who will believe me when I say, when you crash the system, you fail not only yourself, but everyone else. And those couple, in fact, did get done early. Um, he could, he tracked and he checked and he was like, did, did you do something with your class today? Because suddenly a lot of people were on the server. I was like, yes, Lou, I, I taught class today. I had them go in. Did we kill anything? He's like, no, 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 it's all okay. We crashed the server once during finals week. It was the day before it was due because I knew that it, they were all, I was like, do not all wait to publish five minutes before class. 
So they all waited to publish like five hours before class. <laughs> so didn't quite get them spread out enough. Um, so that it crashed it, but Lou caught it. It was early enough in the, he, he kind of tracked it and he knew they were coming due. So he just kind of kept an eye on it. So it went back up, I think within two hours of when it crashed. And the students were all then calling each other. <laughs> This is theater kids. Okay, so have you gotten on? Okay, all right, yes. I heard about these conversations. Like, are you are you published? No, I'm not published. I can't get on. Oh my god, everything's gone. Oh wait, it's back. Um, so I got a lot of dramatic reinterpretations, which adds to some of the experience of the class. Um, what was interesting was is the end results were actually quite interesting. Um, the Streetcar Named Desire. This is uh, one of the plays that was kind of put together. Um, people use different templates in different ways. Um, and really kind of gave different explorations. Um, and they were asked to do certain things um, in the context of the assignment, but some went further. Some did as plain vanilla as they could get. Um, I did not grade down for the plain vanilla because this is about, it's more about expressing the idea than I don't want you to have to go and teach yourself a whole new software if you're absolutely terrified of it. I need you to teach enough to yourself so that you can accomplish what I want you to do, and that's doable. Most people took it and went someplace interesting with it. Um, and I, it was interesting, because like this, this is an acting student, um, but what you see from this is her whole kind of concept of color palette and idea is really solid. Um, actually, actor, actor, design tech actor, uh, this was an uh, in, in internal screen from one of the actors. And what you see is, is that they, it was a new way of expression for them. Um, part of the way that I sold this was, if I gave this to you the conventional way, it would cost you money. So get off my back. Um, and they all kind of went, okay, because uh, they're all broke. So um, they liked the I've saved you money kind of version. The other thing that they liked was the option that if they really liked it, they could publish it out and save themselves a zip file. Um, I said, because I don't know how long your accounts will last. Lou created the accounts under my last name. So it was like the person who had the last name with an A was Whitlock1, and then their password was like 1. So it was very simple, but I had the spreadsheet of kind of the passwords that they'd set up, and all that was published into Vista so students could access it and then figure out how to get off to it. So it was very much kind of structured that way. Most everybody made it out alive. I had one or two that had difficulty, um, that they had pages that just didn't quite work, but I only had like two. One of them was a non, an English uh, second language student, um, and she got most of it, so I was like, all right, we, we worked hard enough here. I think we're okay. Um, they also had a, a written document that they submitted to me on Vista just so that I had backup of written material that if they opted not to put as much written into the pachyderm, that I would have the explanation of it, which was helpful in the context of the assignment. Um, oh, no. Don't like me. Oh, crap. Okay. Um, it has lost one of my links. I think I can pull it up for you. Oh, did, was it all right that I did that? Can I just go into? Okay. Nope. Nope. How about that one? Um, give me just a moment. Oh, you're the wrong. I want just. I just want CSU Chica. Oh, actually, I can do it from here. Log in. What? Um, what I ended up doing was after the, from me though? Yeah. Oh, I can't get to it that way. Okay, hold on. You can go away for a second. I can do. Actually, I can show you this way. What I ended up doing was for their final, they had to have their um, submissions published and they had to send me the web link of their finished pachyderm. And then what they had to do was I compiled all of that material into, what's the wrong one? I did it through my regular Google. 
point out. <laughs> this is the problem of when you have 400 Google accounts. <laughs> it is, man. I'm just like, you know. I. Because uh, it's easier to do the Google site building in my own account. Don't say that in. No, it is my password. I swear to God. Yes, it is. That is me. Oh, you don't like me. Okay, let's just say this regardless. Um, okay, so what I ended up doing was I went in and I created a Google Sites page that listed everybody's link so that everyone could see what was going on in terms of, oh, I can go look at Mikey's, so that it spun off to all of those particular pages. Come on. Wait, baby. You like me. No, you don't. I know. I'm sorry. I'm going too fast for you. Have I crashed you? You yeah, wait a bit. What was interesting about this was for their final, they were required to go in and look at everyone else's, and then they voted as to kind of fan favorite so that I could see what was the best alternative of kind of like which formats tended to work best. Um, what the students were really responding to was those that included video in particular, a lot of people liked. Also, those that had a good sense of color palette and just good layout were the ones that people went, oh, they really spent time thinking about this. They deserve fan favorite, which got them extra credit if they were the fan favorite with each play. Yeah, I was just wondering, it's nice that you allowed all the students to see each other's site, but at the same time, if you ask them to do feedback, then kind of required. Um, what, why did you choose to do it in a Google site rather than within the Vista course? Because it was easier for me to do quick links. The Vista course um, has, sucks for um, creating multiple web links. Well, I'm sorry. It's true, right? Um, if I close this, is it going to make anybody cry if I close the PowerPoint? Uh, oh, no. It doesn't even show that it's running. Okay. How about that? Go away. Yeah, you go away. Um, the reason that it was particularly difficult was I had 35 links to put forward. And so with those um, particular links to put forward, it was difficult in the context of I need to be able to see kind of what's happening. Yeah, 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 don't, 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 don't. I wasn't closing that. I just was moving it so that I could actually get back into this. Yes, yes, yes. You're not my friend at all. <laughs> Let's try this. I knew I had an extra one somewhere. For me to be able to lay this out pretty easily, the other thing is, is there's not an easy way to lay out all your web links in, in Vista to be able to kind of put, okay, I wanted them underneath the place so that you would just go and look at them. And some of the ones that people really liked, uh, they really liked, um, actually, because she actually edited together an entire video clip for this um, and her kind of, her just visual look. Being really slow in terms of mine. Because these are, these are actually pretty decent. It doesn't seem to like the pachyderm's not liking the links off. Which these are all functional. Uh, let me try. the trail, let me try stopping. Sometimes what happens when um, you spend a little too much time going back and forth with Pachyderm is it fritzes, it gets a brain freeze. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is close out your browser because sometimes it gets caught, which in fact it may be doing right now. Um, and these all, in terms of these projects, yeah, it's not liking me at all. Um, the way that these particularly kind of worked was easiest to kind of spin off this way and everybody could look at the same play, which is simpler to be able to control it than to do it in Vista. Um, it was less for me to type, honest to God, when it was right before the final. I could get them up faster, um, which was part of the concern for that. Um, overall, what you'll kind of see out of this is that Pachyderm has some bugs. Um, it's got some things that it, it does well, and then you have moments like this where if, if you're, because it's waiting right now, it's thinking, 
could be other people are logged into the server. Some of this is the slowness of their server. Um, this is also one of the difficulties when you're building. When you go to preview things, you'll get stuck in a loop where it doesn't want to preview what you're looking at. And if you're at all particular about the way your image is looking in relation to your text and you're back and forth a lot, it will cause either slow down or it won't load. It'll get kind of caught in the loop and you have to exit back out and then go back in. You can also crash your pachyderm in doing a lot of editing. Um, and that's, the difficulty of that is, is you can't easily recover the information that you put in. Um, I had that once in the early phases of building for myself, and then they had upgraded the server, so I didn't run into as much of that. But you can do that. Whereas working in a traditional web page, you can have corruption, but you see, it's like, I'm not even doing anything. It's having a little moment. Um, uh, what you can get is, is you can still, you can see like a real time preview much faster in doing a web page format than you can in Pachyderm. Um, all of these together, I still think that Pachyderm is a really viable tool. The students really, they appreciated being able to do something that wasn't the norm. It wasn't just a PowerPoint presentation, which, well, they think they've licked PowerPoint. I'm here to tell you they haven't. Um, in terms of they don't, that's also really hard to insert video or music. And they had to have at least one audio clip, if not more, in this. So because music is a part of tempo and rhythm and mood in particular. So this was an easier way for me to see their final result with sound and image than if I were to give them PowerPoint, because most of them don't understand the exporting out and holding all of that material with their PowerPoint. And they're not taught that anywhere necessarily. Um, so I think that it's one of those where they felt like what they put into it, they got a rel relatively sophisticated output, which made the time and effort involved nice. Um, I know they showed these off to a lot of people, um, which was also nice to hear that they were showing them off to their friends and being like, I can't believe I spent all this time doing this project, but look, it's so cool. Um, there were also much cursing and gnashing of teeth. Um, that they had amongst each other. They are less prone to do that to me, but that's also because they all know me and know my tolerance for that is if you've had a really bad moment, then I'll hear it. But if it's just like a bad day, not so much. So, um, and I think that's one of the things that's really hard about teaching with technology is how much rope do you give them? Because they'll hang you rather than themselves really fast. So it's kind of like where that dimension lives. Is there anything else that I can show you or answer? Yes, I have a question for you, Katie. Um, seeing that you're going to go to web, at least that's what I'm understanding you, mm -hmm. to web -based, will you continue to ask your students to do the Pachyderm project at the end of the semester? Um, well, the question will be, that the, the web-based stuff that I did was actually for 110, which is the introduction to theater large format with module. The 250, the Pachyderm kind of in a box, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's the, it's, it's great and it serves some needs, but it also has some limitations. The other thing is I feel bad when I have to ask Lou to monitor it because it's not something that, it's not something we have in-house. He was willing to do it because he's looking for people to test and use the software. But at the same time, it's a drain on a resource that isn't, it's not one that's close by. So I can't like take him out and buy him a beer as a payoff. Um, so not, not that we here at CSU Chico advocate that. Um, but it doesn't, there's a difficulty there. Um, and I will probably be knocking on Claudine's door over the summer going, I'm teaching this class again. What's the next variation on it? Um, and where I might be able to go with it next. And Pachyderm works, and I know how to do it, but it, it's just that question of it does have some bugs in it that if I could find the perfect thing, that would be great, but I don't know if that exists. Um, I'd like to ask you to answer a question that, that's mainly geared for other faculty moving into Academy e-learning, and that is um, you, you've mentioned some of the pitfalls of, of your ex time uh, resources to experiment with using different authoring tools. Um, but in looking at how to transform how you've been teaching and how you've engaged students, would you recommend to faculty that they try new kinds of software like this or caution them or both? Both. Um, if you're somebody who's like me who likes technology, I say yes. 
because you're going to want to do that anyway. And you get excited by the idea of something new that might really work for you. And you're willing to put up with the hassle of learning it. For somebody who's scared of technology, I don't know if it helps your teaching to work in a format that you're not comfortable with. Because I think you have to be confident in the classroom. If you can't be confident, they smell blood. It's just like sharks, man. They will come after you. And, and I think that's the difficulty that we, because the students have this, it's really odd. They want it, but they don't want it. They want it so that it's all laid out in a particular way and they want it all to match with whatever their own organization system is. There's only so many options that you're going to have to crack that brain. So I think the difficulty is, is your own confidence level translates into the classroom. And also, it is a huge time investment. And if you're somebody completely new to it, Pachyderm is a great way to do it because it is. It's all laid out. You can put it all in. It's frustrating because it has the, the dropout. It has moments where it doesn't work. And that can be terrifying to somebody who's never, ever used technology before. So if I were teaching a class, I'm confident that if I couldn't get the pachyderm up, I could still keep you interested in laughing for the 10 minutes while I have to do whatever it is that I have to do to get it up there. Not everybody is comfortable in that way. So I think it's one of those of, of knowing your own skills and playing to those skills. The other thing is, is how do you define new tool? For some people, using a discussion board is a new tool. And I'm like, really? Okay, that's really not that scary. I swear to God, it'll work. Um, and I think that's, that's the other split that you're starting to see is now your faculty have really differing opinions of where is technology engaging with teaching and the mode by which it's doing so. Is that a good enough answer? Cool. I'm going to ask you another question about your students, Kate. Sure. Um, did you do any sort of survey or exit questionnaire to the students to get feedback from them, or did you notice anything happen in your reviews at the end of the semester? Did the students refer to it in any way? Um, in the context of, well, are you talking, which, which version are you talking about? Well, either, in, okay. in terms of um, the experiment <clears throat> that you tried. The, the first one, which is the large format class, um, it was done as a kind of a component in their teaching experience, so they didn't refer back to it necessarily. The one that we're doing right now, I'm sure we'll get many feedbacks of, we hate online hybrid courses. Uh, because right now the students are very frustrated because it's not smooth. So they are a little fussy about that. Plus they have two instructors, which is making them go a little bit bonkers. Um, so we'll get some feedback. I've done feedback. Um, I did kind of a checkpoint of if you have comments about the website, please let me know. And I've, I've fed some of that back into the way that I've built the later versions in the semester. Um, so I've, I've accommodated that. And a couple of them, I was like, you know, I read that. And they were like, you know, they have gotten, hey, you did do that. So, um, so that has been positive. Um, the feedback on the 250 is some people really liked the box project and some people really liked the pachyderm because I have some people who are still craft focused. Um, the difficulty of doing a blend of both is the problem of the showcase of that. Because um, when I did the box project, we all went in the Wismer Theater and everybody came in and put, on the, put their boxes around the room and then walked around the room and explored everybody's boxes. This, they could do it all online. To try and get the blending of both is relatively difficult to do. So I'm just not sure. And they liked, they liked both versions, but for different reasons. Yeah. Um, in Pachyderm, does it do any kind of automatic optimization of media assets? I mean, will it let a student bring in a 3,000 by 3,000 pixel image if they don't need to, you know? And uh -uh. Because of the fact that it's not assuming when you import the image, it's not assuming that it knows what you're going to do with it because it could be a 3,000 pixel because you want to put it in a Zoom screen or you've just brought in a 3,000 pixel image to put in the background. And that's... It, it optimizes it to some extent when it repackages it back out as a flash, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't do it on the input side. Um, so it's all output side. So like some of the audio files I've put in, they've gotten chomped because of the fact that it was like, uh, these were originally WAV files and you've exported them out and uh, I think it's still stereo, maybe not. Um, so it's had some issues in terms of that. It's not perfect and clean by any means, but it still tends to work. That was pretty cool. Cool, thanks. Uh, I'm a big, big technology guy, so I thought it, it's a new way to 
Essentially, a new way to do PowerPoint. That's what I thought. It is. It's kind of like I could do, and this is where I'm like, hmm, do I want to do a play in a Prezi? Is that my next go round? Because Prezi is interesting because it doesn't have to be linear, although you can set the path and it moves and it swishes and it does interesting things because it's an online, basically an online version of PowerPoint to some extent, and you can embed YouTube so you can still get audio and image. But the the nice thing about this is that it's you can export and save. It also allows you to put more into it than Prezi. It has some limitations because it's all you're uploading everything to their online um, source unless you're referencing out and putting in a, in a web uh, link for the, where the image lives, that kind of deal. Um, so yeah, it's basically PowerPoint, but with a few more bells and whistles. Okay. But it's all flash-based, so you can't put it into your iPad. Yeah. That's the, and that, I think, is going to be a concern for some students, because they are starting to carry them now more and more. Why well, Apple needs to adopt flash already. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so sure. much. I just want to say thank you for coming today mm -hmm. to the Technology and Learning and Teaching Great. and telling us about your experience with Pepner. Lovely. We have another session that's coming up on April 27th with Michael Coyle really? in Political Science, who's going to talk about uh, deviance and difference in his class. In the Technology. excitement knows no bounds. Absolutely. So thanks again for coming. Thank you. Okay. Are we good? Are we out? And this can just be before. There's no exit actually on the on this computer. Oh, okay. Okay, fun. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Kate. No, no, fine. Where'd it go? I just to close it in on. All right.